I'll expect you at the fundraiser, Monica. And I have told you, Alan, I'm not going to be there. What is this fundraising? Uh, nothing. But it's nothing important right now. What's important right now is for the baby to go to bed. It's right past his bedtime. All right, I'll take him up. No, I'll take him. Monica. Rick, please. <coughs> Good night, Alan. I'll be calling you. Alan, I want you to leave her alone. Legally, she's my wife. And Alan Jr. is my son. Legally. Do you know how it destroys me to see that baby in your arms? I love that child so much, and I miss him so desperately. I know exactly how you feel. I don't think so. I think you're forgetting the time that you were living under the same roof, when you thought you were his father. I am his father. Alan, don't do that to yourself. He is my son. I am the natural father. We both know that. Steve, I think you should probably do that. I'll leave when I'm ready. I don't understand you. No, you never did. Neither did Monica. I see you both more clearly than I ever have. What is that supposed to mean? It means I see how much you love the baby. He's my son. Yes, of course. Tell me something. How did it feel when Monica told you the truth about him? That your one night of lovemaking had produced a son for you? What are you getting at? Civility. That's what we all agreed, to be civil until Monica got her divorce, didn't we? Yes, I think you could be better. She was upset, very upset, that you came over here so unexpectedly this afternoon with your father. She didn't expect my father along, but I certainly told her that I was coming here. Maybe I misunderstood. No, no. Monica has a way of just telling partial truths. I said maybe I misunderstood her. Oh, yes, of course. What would you like me to do, apologize again for stopping by this evening? You said something about a fundraising event. Yes, that's right, for the uh, new teaching wing of the hospital. I thought Frank Smith was uh, funding the entire one. Well, he was going to, but... Uh... He's withdrawn now that Luke and Jennifer are having all this trouble. So now there is a fundraising party. That's right. My father and I are going to assume the major portion of the funding, but uh, that won't be all of it. It's upwards of $20 million, and it's going to need additional funding. All right, what does Monica have to do with all this? Well, she's still my wife, and she's a member of the Quartermain Foundation, and they're the ones who are going to be supporting this project. And she's going to be expected at the party, Rick. Alan, she will not be there. Period. Well, just think about it. Seriously, will you? I really would like her there. I'd like you there as well. It's going to be a very elegant evening. I think it'll probably be a night that both of you remember always. You hardly touched your dinner? Well, a little anxiety is good for the diet. Look, I know it's wishful thinking, but I'd like to get your mind off of Laura for a little while. It's useless. I wouldn't even try if I were you. I do apologize for it, but I can't help worrying about where she is and how she is. And why she has this wonderful tendency to run away every time there's trouble. Well, I guess maybe I have to take some of the responsibility for that. Don't I? I'm her mother. Here we are. Tea and brand new mm. coffee. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. Well, to what shall we drink? How about the Laura's safe homecoming? I wish drinking to something could make it so. But I'm very much afraid, Howard, that, uh, that she's not going to surface for a long time, if she ever does. Do you realize there's a possibility that the things that Scotty said to the papers about her having an affair with Lou could very well cause her to just disappear forever? Oh, come on now. You don't really believe that. Look, Leslie, underneath Laura's surface rebellion, she's, she likes the ways of the establishment. She really wants to have a, a family and a home someday. Yes, she used to want that. Then she had to watch my wonderfully happy marriage to Rick fall apart. Maybe it has shaken her belief in marriage, as it has for all of us. Oh, I'm 
so sorry about all of this. You're sorry. Come here. Hold me. Just hold me. You're shaking like a leaf. Oh, no. Isn't that silly? No, it is not silly, Monica. It's not. Alan told me about the fundraising dinner. I am no way going to let him browbeat you into doing that. I don't want to have anything to do with him. And I don't want him to have anything to do with that baby. When I see you like this, I'm... I'm truly sorry I could never live up to the promises I tried to make the night our son was conceived. But Leslie needed me so much, I... Sir. I felt I had to come back. As much as I hated that decision, I know it was something you had to do. Anyway, it's like an eternity ago. Everything is fine. It will be fine as soon as the divorce is final. And that's what I am living for. We're we gonna have that waterfront clinic. We'll practice side by side. And no more estates on the lake or houses. Sounds marvelous. Very simple plan. And that's just the way I want it. Because it's the kind of money like the quarter made to have work that I don't know. This taints everybody's lives. Well, Adam, how do things go with Monica? I think it went pretty well. well. That's a rather ambiguous remark. What about the uh, fundraising dinner? Did she say she'd be there? She's deciding. Well, what does that mean? What that means is with some encouragement from the right source, I think she'll go. Encouragement from who? From you. Dad, will you please ask her for me? She's never been able to refuse you anything. I think you have more faith in me than I deserve, Alan. Not when it comes to Monica. You still want her back, even after she walked out on you. More than you'll ever know. All right, I'll see if I can get her to come to the fundraising dinner, but I must say, at the moment, I don't know how. Well, I have an idea. Would you like my suggestion? Okay, let's have it. Sit. It's, um, a little underhanded. No, the best plans usually are. Well, this whole fundraising is about the teaching wing, right? Come on, get on with it. All right, well, Rick has agreed to teach the interns on a salary basis in order to help fund the waterfront clinic that he wants so badly. The place where Monica plans to work? One and the same. Oh, in other words, uh, if he wants the job, he better show up at the charity party, right? Mm-hmm, and so at Monica. Will you help me? If you think this is the best way to get Monica back as your wife, I will. Thanks, Dad. I'd do anything at all to get Monica back into this house. Anything. And I think that that dinner is just the way to do it. Hardy, Dr. Hardy, how nice to see you. Hello, Susan. Hey, what about me? Isn't it nice to see me? Oh, it's always nice to see you. You know that. Susan, I'd like you to meet Dr. Tony Pirelli from the State Mental Hospital at Forest Hills. This is Susan Moore. Dr. Pirelli, welcome to the Floating Rib. Thank you. Uh, Forest Hills is where we're thinking of transferring Heather, and Susan is Heather's cousin. Oh, I may be getting in touch with you about her, okay? Fine, any time. You can usually find me right here. All right. I take it this is your reservation for four. That's right. I'm the big okay. spender tonight. <laughs> your table right here. Excellent. Oh, look. There's Leslie and Howard. Sure is. Hello, Leslie. Hello. Hello. Howard. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Well, uh, our prayers are with Laura, Leslie. Thank you. I know that, and I appreciate it. Do excuse us. Excuse me. Sure. Mm -hmm. How are you, Jeff? Oh, I can't complain, or won't. <laughs> so, Leslie, I don't think you know Tony Pirelli. No, I don't. It's nice to meet you. Uh, the pleasure is definitely mine. Uh, Leslie? Weber. Dr. Weber. Weber. Any relation? Not anymore. We are <clears throat> ex-in-laws. Leave it to me to ask. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Pirelli. Do Dr. Pirelli. Dr. Pirelli. <laughs> Howard Lansing. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Well, you're a lucky man, Mr. Lansing. I think so. <clears throat> mm. uh, listen, I think we're holding Susan up. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, I hope we didn't interrupt anything. Not at all. Okay, see you. See you. Well, Dr. Pirelli certainly takes over, doesn't he? Hello? I beg your pardon, what did you just say? I said your Dr. Pirelli certainly takes over, doesn't he? What do you mean, my Dr. Pirelli? Well, you couldn't take your eyes off him. Howard, that's not true. 
Here we are. Oh, thank you. Hooray. Thank you, thank you. Mm. Thank you. You are welcome. Just let me know when you're ready to order. We will. Here we are. I'm sorry. Maybe yeah, maybe sorry. I should have asked. Are we ready for menus or not? Well, I think it's, uh, it's your ball game, and it's, it's up to you, Steve, but I think we should wait until after dinner to discuss Heather's transfer to state is a pretty hairy situation. Tony. No, Audrey, it's not up to... It's not my style to, to beat around the bush, you know. Right? Right, Jeff? Yes, that's very right. And you seem to know what you're doing. Well, when it comes to psychiatry, I know what I'm doing. Floating rib. Uh, this is Edward Quatermain. To whom am I speaking? Oh, this is Susan, Mr. Quatermain. What can I do for you? Oh, hello, Susan. I'm uh, trying to locate Steve Hardy. I called his home, and uh, Aunt Logan said he might be at your restaurant. Is he there by any chance? Yes, he just came in a few minutes ago. If you'll hold on, I'll get him for you. Thank you. Well, we're in luck. He's there. That's good. We have to talk to Steve before anybody else, including Monica and Rick. Oh, absolutely. <coughs> yes, Edward. Steve, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but this is important. What's the problem? Well, there is a problem, but there's also a solution. What's this about, Edward? It has to do with Frank Smith. I understand that uh, due to this situation with his daughter, he has to rescind his offer to donate the uh, new teaching wing to uh, General Hospital. I know, Edward. I spoke to Frank this afternoon. Well, I did say I have a solution. That's right, you did. <laughs> Actually, it was Alan's idea initially, but I joined him wholeheartedly. If uh, we wouldn't be intruding, we'd like to drop by the restaurant and outline the plan to you. We have to come into town anyway. Well, by all means, come on over. We're going to be here quite a while this evening. Well, marvelous. I know how important this project is to you, especially since it's come so far. I couldn't agree more. I just feel sorry for Frank right now. And it amazes me how many lives have been affected just because that uh, wedding never took place. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I've been so uptight tonight. It's all right, I understand. Oh, I just don't have any right to take out my frustrations on Alan, on you. I said I understand. Okay. Oh. When you hold me in your arms, it's like you hold the problems of the world. Just go away. One day, very soon, we'll be able to spend all our spare time like this. Just yeah. sounds heavenly. Of course, I don't guarantee too much spare time, because with the clinic, it's going to take a lot of uh, time, energy. It's OK. I'm all ready for that challenge. It's going to be our dream. We'll be working side by side as a team, helping those people that are less fortunate than we are. Everybody is less fortunate than we are, you know that? Because we cut each other. And a very beautiful bundle upstairs. I have told you time and time again, he is not beautiful. He is handsome. Well, that's something I've been thinking about. Trying to decide. What? Decide what? Well, if he looks more like his mother or his father. Well, I, I think babies look like other babies. They're all alike, don't you? I'm having difficulty finding re resemblance to me. Well, really? Yeah, I even looked at my baby pictures. You did? Yes. I, I don't see any of the uh, family characteristics. But... Well, maybe, um, maybe they're all from my family. However, not having ever met my family, I can't really say. Well, maybe that's it. They're showing up in him now. Anyway, it doesn't matter to me who he looks like. No, as long as he's beautiful. A handsome, beautiful. <laughs> well, one of the two. You know, I meant it when I said I, I want to have a second child by you right away. That may be a little premature until the divorce is final. You are so square. Well, you have known that for some time now. No. Maybe that is why I just love you so much. So much, I just want to shout it to the whole world. Once the divorce is, is final. final. <laughs> <laughs> and everything will be different. Yes, and I don't want a scandal before that. I've asked Steve to help with funding on the clinic. Do you, do you agree? I think there's a good chance that he'll come through. 